In a humanitarian crisis, water management is one of the main challenges. Assuring that people have access to clean, fresh water is particularly complicated. Crisis situations are generally divided into three phases, relief, early recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. In these situations, priority actions focus on many different areas of intervention, such as protection, camp management, nutrition, and early recovery, and must also include providing safe, good quality water in adequate quantities. Ensuring excreta is properly contained and disposed of by making sanitation facilities accessible to and used by affected populations. Establishing health services to detect and treat diseases and promoting good hygiene, assuring the availability of the means to practice it, like providing soap, as well as hand washing and personal hygiene facilities as part of the interventions in terms of water, sanitation and hygiene. Diarrhea is defined as having loose or watery stools at least three times per day. Acute cases can lead to significant fluid loss and dehydration, which may result in death or other severe consequences if fluids are not replaced. 88% of diarrheal deaths worldwide are due to unsafe water, inadequate sanitation and poor hygiene. Diarrhea is one of the leading contributors to child mortality, second to pneumonia. Cholera is an infectious disease transmitted by the bacterium Vibrio cholerae. There are various serogroups of this disease known, which means the same bacterium has, genetically, diverse forms. Ela é transmitida através, obviamente, das fezes infectadas e como consegue ter algum grau de sobrevivência importante fora do organismo ou contaminar, uma vez que a diarreia da cólera é uma diarreia uh, uh, continuada, persistente, uh, uh, as pessoas estão sempre a eliminar a, a bactéria e, portanto, este, esta eliminação da bactéria ao contaminar roupas ou mesmo a pele da própria pessoa vai fazer com que seja muito mais fácil, através do próprio contacto, do contacto interpessoal, haver também passagem da bactéria para outras pessoas à volta. E, portanto, um componente importante para além da água contaminada, dos alimentos contaminados, é a transmissão de pessoa a pessoa desta bactéria. Cholera continues to pose a serious public health problem among developing world populations which have no access to adequate water and sanitation resources. There's also other type of bacteria and virus that can cause the same symptomatology with cholera. Also water virus infection and uh, E. coli infection. Diarrhea can also be caused by rotavirus. It is estimated to cause about 40% of hospital admissions due to diarrhea among children under five worldwide. Another pathogen responsible for many cases of diarrhea is E. coli. E. coli make up a large and diverse group of bacteria. Most E. coli strains are harmless, but others may cause diseases, in particular diarrhea, that can sometimes be bloody. In some cases, diarrhea can last for weeks. For someone who has a weakened immune system, chronic diarrhea may represent a life-threatening illness. Chronic diarrhea can have many different causes. HIV patients, for example, commonly suffer from chronic diarrhea, which results in significant mortality and reduced quality of life. Another cause of chronic diarrhea is poor nutrition. In Haiti, for example, prior to the earthquake, about one in three children under five years old were estimated to be malnourished, and one in 20 suffered from acute malnutrition. Poor nutritional status makes children more vulnerable to infections like acute diarrhea. In the aftermath of an emergency, with a shortage of clean water and sanitation, it is indispensable that diagnosis of disease is quick and accurate. The life of a patient may depend on the accuracy of the diagnosis and the following treatment. The primary goal of treating any form of diarrhea viral, bacterial, parasitic or non-infectious, is preventing dehydration, 
or appropriately rehydrating patients with dehydration. In the case of cholera, timely case management can reduce mortality to less than 1%. Mild and moderate cases can be treated with oral rehydration salts only. ORS can successfully treat 80% of cholera patients, both adults and children. The remaining 20% of severe cases will need rehydration with intravenous fluids. Antibiotics are not paramount in the successful treatment of patients. But they can reduce the duration of disease and diminish the volume of rehydration fluids needed. As well as shorten the duration of shedding of the germ. Doctors working, for example, in Haiti are constantly looking for and implementing solutions to avoid the propagation of diarrheal diseases. Most diarrhea-causing pathogens share a similar mode of transmission, from the stool of one person to the mouth of another. Some of the best preventive methods include the promotion of breastfeeding, vitamin A supplementation and immunization against rotavirus, one of the many causes of diarrhea. Hygiene promotion has been a key component in keeping waterborne diseases at bay in camps. There have been many campaigns that aim to change behavior through community involvement, education and health promotion activities. Promotions of hand washing with soap, for example, as well as community-wide sanitation, have been two essential preventive measures. Special teams have reached thousands of people through interpersonal hygiene promotion sessions, as well as through monitoring and promoting the proper treatment of water. Information on health risk reduction through improved hygiene practices must also be provided. In order to support the medical and social efforts and to effectively improve sanitary conditions, proper sanitation and water need to be made available to the people. Properly containing and disposing of excreta can greatly reduce water contamination and contribute to decreasing the transmission of diarrhea. As for water, people need to have access to improved water sources, like piped water boreholes or protected dug wells and springs, and should adopt and use methods of water purification, like chlorination, filtration or boiling. Interventions to improve water quality at the source, treatment of household water and safe storage systems contribute to reducing the incidence of diarrhea by 47%. In an emergency setting, it's important for organizations to coordinate with locals and turn populations into actors in their own assistance. As former residents depart from the camps to return to their original neighborhoods, knowledge promoted by different organizations goes with them. Educating empowered communities and providing them with the skill to build wells and water tanks, use chlorinators and implement hygiene practices is essential. Monitoring water quality during a humanitarian crisis helps to guarantee populations are consuming safe water. Reducing water-related diseases, providing education for health, and improving the availability of basic services will have a positive effect on any humanitarian crisis, promoting education and economic development, and improving the population's quality of life.